At some point, we've all looked at the back of our phones and seen something like 8, 16, 32 GB. And it turns out that GB stands for gigabytes, which is a measurement of how much data your phone can store. And giga actually turns out to be something we call an SI prefix. And today on Real Chemistry, we're going to be talking about what these SI prefix things are. Giga, it turns out, just means a billion. So when you hear the word gigabyte, it's actually a combination of two things. On the one hand, you have giga, which means a billion. And on the other hand, you have bytes, which is just a measurement of data. You put those things together, and what you're saying is, I have a billion bytes. So if you look at the back of an iPhone and it says 8 GB, that's saying there's 8 billion bytes of data you can store on that iPhone. In this video, we're going to do two things. First, I'm going to introduce these SI prefix things. And then I'm going to do some examples of going back and forth between expressing numbers with SI prefixes or without SI prefixes. So here's a list of a bunch of different SI prefixes and units associated with them, some of them more common than others. If we take a look at any of them, we'll see that they're half in white and half in blue. And the white part is actually the SI prefix. And the blue part is whatever we're measuring. So if we look at a terabyte, which is the size of, say, a typical hard drive, that's the SI prefix tera, which means a trillion, and byte, which is just, again, a measurement of data. On the other hand, we have this thing milliliter down here. Milli is the SI prefix, which means a thousandth, that is one over a thousand, and liter, which is a measurement of volume. So a milliliter is a thousandth of a liter. So whenever you look at some number or some quantity reported with an SI prefix and a unit, you'll see them combined in this way. And if we want to write abbreviations, we can just put together the abbreviation for the SI prefix and an abbreviation for the unit. So you might see something like terabyte written with a T and a B. And the T is for tera and the B is for byte. Or you might see ML for milliliters and the M is for milli and the L is for liters. So we just combine these two types of abbreviations. <clears throat> so here is a table of all the different SI prefixes and what we're calling a factor. The factor is just what you'd be multiplying something by if I put that SI prefix in front of it. So before I said, if you see giga on the back of your iPhone, that's giga, what that means is a billion bytes. So there's your billion. So the factor is just, okay, what does this SI prefix do? Does it make it bigger? Does it make it smaller? And by how much? So the SI prefixes on the top part of this list make things bigger. You'll see they're like a trillion, a billion, a million. The SI prefixes on the bottom part of this list turn out to make things smaller. So like a nano turns out to be uh, a billionth. So a nanosecond is a billionth of a second. Now, if you've watched my video on scientific notation, you know that we typically express big numbers like this with scientific notation. And in fact, if you haven't seen that video, go back and watch that now before continuing. You need to know how to go back and forth between numbers in and not in scientific notation to be able to do the problems in this video. Okay, so if we use the scientific notation to express those factors, we see that over here, then we can see that it's a lot easier just to use that scientific notation, and instead of writing all those zeros, we just put a number in the exponent above 10. So, that's the way you'll typically see SI prefix tables. You'll see them with the scientific notation factor that is just the number written in scientific notation. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at a problem where we want to write 300,000 meters in terms of kilo. So basically we want to write 300,000 meters in terms of kilometers. How do we do that? Well, I've broken this process down into three steps. So step one is just find the correct SI prefix on the list. The correct SI prefix in this case is just kilo because that's the SI prefix we want to use to express our new number. And if we go on our list, we'll see kilo right here next to 10 to the third. And what that's saying is, is kilo and multiplying something by 10 to the third is just the same exact thing. Now, the next step is to write the number in scientific notation with the correct factor. What's the correct factor? Well, that's just the factor listed next to the SI prefix on the table. So the correct factor in this case is 10 to the third. So we want to write 300,000 in scientific notation using 10 to the third. So all we're going to do is we're going to follow our rules for writing something in scientific notation. And we're going to start out by writing 300,000. And here we now have meters 
on our number. So we always want to be keeping track of our units. So that's 300,000 meters. And then if we're going to write that in scientific notation, we know our decimal is at the end of that number if it's not actually written there. And we're just going to bounce that decimal over three times. Why three? Because that is the number in our exponent for our correct factor. Kilo and 10 to the third are the same thing. So if I want to express 300,000 in scientific notation using 10 to the third, that means I need to move my decimal three times. One, two, three. And now we get my new decimal right here. And remember, if you have a really big number that is an SI prefix, you're using an SI prefix with a positive exponent, you're going to be moving that decimal to the left. Whereas if you have an SI prefix with a negative number in the exponent, you're going to be moving that decimal to the right in this step. And we'll do an example of moving the decimal in the other direction on the next slide. Okay, so we've moved our decimal three times, and now we can just rewrite our number in scientific notation. We have 300 with the decimal at the end of it, and then we're going to put our times 10 to the third. And again, this is still meters. So, that's writing 300,000 with the correct factor. That's step two. Step three says just replace that times 10 to the whatever with the correct SI prefix. So all we're going to do is where we see times 10 to the third, we're going to write kilo. So what we get is we get 300, and then we write kilo where we had 10 to the third, and then we write meters. So, that's our answer. 300,000 meters, written with the SI prefix kilo, is 300 kilometers. So now we know that 300,000 meters is 300 kilometers. So we're going to go through another example of writing something with an SI prefix. So this next one says, write 0 .020 seconds using the SI prefix micro. Step one is once again, find the correct SI prefix on the list. And so we look over and we see micro is 10 to the minus 6. So now we need to write that number in scientific notation using 10 to the minus 6. So again, we're going to write out 0 0.020. I'm going to leave off the seconds for a second because we're going to be moving that decimal a lot. Now, how many times do we want to move the decimal? 6 because that's the number in our exponent over here next to micro. We're also going to move that decimal to the right because we're dealing with the SI prefix that's really, really small. And so if I'm using an SI prefix that's really small, that means the number in front of that SI prefix has to get bigger. So we're going to bounce that decimal over six times. Once, twice, three times, four times, five times, and six times. And we know when we do that in scientific notation, and we move past our number, we just fill in those bounces with zeros. You can see here why it's so important to have watched that scientific notation video. All right, now I'll tack on my seconds, because we should really always have our units. So I'll rewrite this guy without all those messy bounces, and now with our scientific notation multiplier on there. So what we're going to get is 20,000 times 10 to the minus 6. Why the minus 6? Well, we moved our decimal over 6 times, and we moved it to the right. So that gives us the times 10 to the minus 6. And now, once again, we'll write out our seconds. And then, step 3. We've done step 1 and step 2. Step 3 is just replace that, that times 10 to the whatever with the correct SI prefix. So we're just going to replace our times 10 to the minus 6 with micro. So we get 20,000 microseconds. Now, we can do kind of a conceptual check here at the end. 20,000 is a big number. And that makes sense because we're using microseconds to measure something. So if I measure something that's 0.02 seconds long, 
It should be a lot of microseconds. So the fact that we've gotten to the end and gotten this big number, 20,000, is good. Because we should have a big number if we're using a really small SI prefix like micro. All right, now we're going to go the opposite direction. We're going to start with something that's written with an SI prefix multiplier on it, and we're going to try to write it without it. So here we're starting with 30 milliliters, and we're going to write that without an SI prefix. So we have 30 milliliters, and all we're going to do, step one says, find the correct SI prefix on the list. So same as the first step in the last set of problems. And we go and we find milli, and it turns out milli is the same as 10 to the minus third. Okay, and all we're going to do for step two is replace the SI prefix with the correct factor, or the correct multiplier. So here we see milli, and all we're going to do is where we see that milli, we're just going to write times 10 to the minus third. Because milli is the same thing as multiplying something by 10 to the minus third. So we write that then as 30 times 10 to the minus third. And now we have liters. We've lost our milli. Why have we lost our milli? Well, we've lost our milli because that's why we put in the 10 to the minus third. So this 10 to the minus third is the same thing as writing milli. So since we wrote that instead of milli, we've got to get rid of it. So now we have 30 times 10 to the minus 3 liters. So the last step here is express it in standard notation if you want to. You don't actually have to express it in standard notation. That's correct as it's written right now. But oftentimes it's convenient to express that in standard notation. And I'll show you what that looks like in the next problem. But if you know how to go between scientific notation and standard notation, then you should already be able to do that sort of problem. Okay. So we're going to do one more example of writing something that currently has an SI prefix without it. So here we're given 0 0.005 kilometers, and we want to write that without an SI prefix. So again, step one's uh, find the correct SI prefix on the list, and we're looking for kilo, because that's what we see in our problem up here. And all we're going to do is we're going to replace that kilo with our correct factor, which is times 10 to the third. So that's step two. Replace the SI prefix with the correct factor. So we're going to write 0 0.005, and now instead of writing kilo, we're going to write times 10 to the third. That's the correct factor. That's what kilo means. And then after that, we're still going to keep track of our units, which we have meters. So we have 0 0.005 times 10 to the third meters. Now in this case, we could leave it in scientific notation, but it looks pretty funny, and it'll look really nice if we put it into standard notation. So we're going to go ahead and put that into standard notation. And so here, since we have times 10 to the positive third, that means we're going to move our decimal place to the right three times. So we start with it right here, and we move it to the right one, two, three times. And now when we rewrite our number, we just get rid of our times 10 to the whatever. And if we do that, we see we're left with five. We're dropping all those zeros in front because they don't change the number. And we just get 5 and then our units, which is meters. And that's the answer. So in this video, we've talked about what SI prefixes are. They're just a way to express numbers that are either big or small in a convenient form. And we've talked about how you can take a number that's not written with an SI prefix and add it to it. We've also taken a number with an SI prefix on it and showed how you can remove it. So that does it for this episode of Real Chemistry. Please check out my YouTube channel to see more videos on chemistry. You can also subscribe. As always, leave any questions or comments you have below this video and I'll try to answer them as soon as possible.